Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we're on the website of French auction portal Intanchere and we're going to have a look at another auction by Vichy Auctions. We've been covering them quite a lot recently. They've had lots of auctions in the last kind of month or so. So they have this auction coming up now which is Wind and Plucked Stringed Instruments. It's happening on the 13th of April, so it's the 9th today, so a few days left to go. Looks like there's some pretty interesting stuff in this auction. 283 lots, a lot better kind of stuff than uh, we've seen in previous auctions. You can already see a bit of a glimpse of this already. Some pretty exceptional guitars there. Uh, so this is going to be an interesting one. 25% buyer's uh, premium as always, so whatever the final hammer price is, you pay that on top. Bear in mind this is a French auction, so shipping, import, export fees, CITES restrictions, all of that fun stuff applies. If you do enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing, like or comment, etc. Because it does help quite a lot. So yeah, without further ado, uh, let's get on to it and see what's uh, going on. So we have an exceptional Baroque guitar by from the Verbohm dynasty made in 1699 which it bears the ivory cartouche inlaid at the top of the head bearing the inscription Verbohm at Paris 1699 okay I mean there's lots of stuff here that we're not really going to get into but uh, if you're into if you're into uh, antique kind of guitars there other than kind of Stradivari etc you're not going to find much finer than a Verbohm I mean you can kind of look at this already this is an exceptional uh, guitar interesting that they don't even have an estimate on this so I think it's got to be you know it's this is a super super high tier instrument absolutely incredible look at that work other than other than the name on the head place probably one thing letting it down beautiful rosette there so really quite an exceptional looking uh, piece here yeah really beautiful we could probably look at that uh, for days to be honest, so we've got another Verbohm uh, guitar here, 1668. Uh, this one, similar but slightly different uh, design. Really beautiful, though, aren't they? Absolutely incredible looking uh, guitars here. Kind of exceptional workmanship here. Quite a sweet little headstock there. Beautiful inlay work. Once again, no. Uh, no kind of estimate there but this has got to be on the ridiculous kind of levels i would think but kind of odd that they're still not uh not kind of showing what that is another really nice rosette there beautiful inlays on the fingerboard there right a rare and remarkable children's guitar by Joachim chilka made in hamburg so once again if you don't know much about kind of guitars, plucked instruments, Tioka, some of the most beautiful instruments ever made, like the workmanship, like the inlay uh, work, absolutely crazy. And this looks to be a very simple example of the Tioka work, like some of it is pff, on a next level. I mean, this has some beautiful work when we see the sides, look at the, the kind of the detailing on this really really impressive but some of the baroque guitars from the Tioka workshop absolutely ridiculous kind of stuff really really interesting work there yeah i mean this is quite a ridiculous sale already and we're only three lots in so i think it's going to be quite a curious one but yeah another exceptional instrument 40 to 60 thousand on that so uh more information here that you can read about but otherwise we're going to be here forever but uh, definitely worth looking at i would assume that these verbohm guitars are in excess of a hundred thousand maybe even two hundred thousand i'm not sure so anyway we have another baroque guitar here made in venice 17th century attributed to the Celis family once again another top tier family of makers Celis. if you go to some of the really fine museums um like the Ashmolean in uh, Oxford I think you'll see a Celis violin uh, sorry a Celis guitar there so once again a really fine work really really beautiful so these are top tier instruments really kind of unusual actually to see instruments of this quality coming up for 
auction really really interesting these are kind of like i would almost say museum grade uh instruments here really really beautiful work absolutely stunning yeah really quite mind-blowing uh stuff here could do a video purely on uh on these uh, few first few lots really so it's going to be an interesting video yeah very beautiful okay so we've got a uh, violin by Romain Charon like um, a pochette dancing masters fiddle here Paris 1681 really really interesting late 17th century pochette here once again beautiful work on this all kind of tortoise shell here really really interesting yeah really the only other one with a similar coat of arms is in the music museum so this is once again this is a museum grade instrument so crazy absolutely crazy that is exceptional sale already interesting scary head there one of the most crazy sales already and we're only in to uh lot five. Oh wow it comes with its own little bow as well really interesting said we could probably do a video on each one of these lots individually at this point because it really is pretty bonkers uh to be fair uh then moving on we've got another pochette of a slightly uh different kind here let's have a look at that one dating from the 18th century five to six thousand on that anonymous work that's a couple of bits of ivory once again really nice but nowhere near in the league of the other instruments we've seen so far but uh but yeah cute looking thing for sure really interesting i quite like to make one of these actually a little pochette that'd be quite cute total length 42 centimeters interesting yeah very curious okay uh moving on Let's see what else other wonders we have all right we've got a whole load of uh pochettes here three to five on this one 19th century so it does look like someone's getting rid of a collection here really interesting lion on this one Looks like it's got quite a long head. Yeah, these are some exceptional pochettes. Really interesting. Another one here. Early 20th century, interesting. Anonymous work, three to 5,000 on this. It's again, like quite a lot of uh, tortoise shell going on there. It's gonna be a CITES nightmare. That is one drawback. Interesting head. What's that supposed to depict? Female figure enhanced with ivory inlays. Yeah, interesting. It's a very curious looking one as well. Almost looks like it's kind of Cleopatra or something. Right, 18th century pochette here. 1200 to 1500 interesting head this one not quite as nice as some of the other ones right elegant display instrument representing a kitarone made in naples in the 19th century okay 300 to 400 there quite nice yes yeah, like a little I wonder what size it actually is yeah 39.6 centimeters so it's almost like a little one of those uh, tourist ones that you get these days really interesting wow look at this Sitern here with the watch key mechanism by Gerard Joseph de la Planck okay 15 to 20,000 wow I think this is really quite beautiful it's one of the most beautiful citterns I think I've actually seen 
that's really really quite stunning other than the uh, Tielka sitens actually which are absolutely incredible yeah really beautiful looking instrument there this is a crazy auction my mind is a little bit uh, blown to be honest we missed actually a couple of images there beautiful uh, rosette there yeah it's really quite a crazy looking instrument Right, a mandola by Edmund Saunier in Paris, 8 to 12. 8 to 12,000 on that. Yeah, beautiful work on the ribs there. This vaulted back where the ribs dip, that's very, very difficult to make. That's really, really quite complicated. It's another beautiful instrument, looks very clean. Fairly simple rosette, but quite elegant. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, well, what else are we going to see? Ivory recorder in G. 18th century, 8 to 12,000. Really, really interesting. This model is one of the few made in ivory that has come down to us stylistically compared to certain instruments of Johann Christoph Denner or Johann Wilhelm Oberländer. Interesting. Probably German work. Yeah, we don't see kind of instruments that fine in this level before. Recorder here, 3 to 500. And 1840, that's really quite interesting. Flagellet in ebony here as well. 18th century, attributed to Jean Baptiste Martin, 800 to 1000. Really, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen uh, an 18th century recorder before. It's certainly not in an auction in any case. Oboe with boxwood capsule there. Quattro, 5 to 700. Traditional oboe in fruit wood, 100 to 150. Two pairs of children's drumsticks. Blackened wood, two to three hundred. Now we've got a whole load of books and stuff that we'll kind of ignore for now. Neapolitan mandolin by R. Porto Figli, made in Catania. Yeah, quite a nice mandolin, but nothing too crazy. I wonder if we're going to see any really nice mandolins here. Okay, a Gibson mandolin, USA, made in 1920, five to seven hundred on that. Nothing too crazy. Another Neapolitan mandolin by Fratelli Venaccia. Once again, nice looking instrument. Another Neapolitan mandolin by Stridenta. That's fairly lower tier, three to five hundred. Nice eighteenth century Neapolitan mandolin. This is getting a bit more like it with a Fabricatore label, but not by them. Also vaulted uh back on this as well but condition is not so good but uh it's an interesting looking entry level 18th century uh mandolin cello by galas uh by jean rowies with double soundboard well galas model sorry three to five hundred solid body tenor plectrum banjo by gibson Another tenor banjo by Gibson. Experimental contemporary cello. Flame maple back and sides, five to six hundred. Interesting looking item. Trench cello made by G. Bardi and dedicated to my friend Le Francois. Uh, 1918. Okay. Three to five on that. That is definitely an interesting looking instrument there wonder how that sounds right one of these lyre guitars 800 to a thousand on that anonymous work yeah these are quite nice this one looks like it's had a few repairs and restorations a lute in white 1000 to 1200 so one that's not been completed right uh, I think the translation is not uh, going so well for this instrument, uh, but this is a 
Viola de More by JTL. 1,000 to 1,200 on that. Quite sure why the translation has said that, but okay. Interesting. Uh, needs a bit of work for sure. Not the greatest uh, example. Viola de Gamba. Looks like kind of 60s type. Not super interesting. Anonymous Quinton made around 1,800. Okay, 1500 to 1800 on that. They did like making these the French at some point. Rare and beautiful travel chamisen. Viola de Gamba there. By Alan Myers in 1975. Five to seven hundred on that. Iris Sitton by Stefan Sobel. Quinton, 18th century. So there were, these are not that rare to find these Quintons, and quite popular. Another Viola de More made in Mirkel. Interesting, second half of the 19th century, 800 to 1000. It's kind of curious, a bit more of a plain one, violin kind of shape. But yeah, very interesting with this super long neck with a normal scroll. Kind of curious. Sort of body Les Paul copy here, electric guitar by Fender. So we're getting into normal territory now. Jazz guitar here, Fender branded hollow body guitar. 1968 Corona 2 model 800 to 1200 okay electronics not tested this could be quite a good deal for someone if it's like an original 60s uh, hollow body romantic guitar by Lejeune made in Paris 1821 1500 to 1800 the estimate on that looks fairly nice Okay, more jazz guitars here. Solo body electric guitar from Gibson, 1994. Les Paul Black Beauty model, six to seven thousand on that. Romantic Carrier guitar made in Mirko around 1830. Five to seven hundred. Yep, nice looking instrument. Nothing too crazy, but fair estimate as well. So solid body electric guitar from Ohio, made in the 1960s, for Major Con by the Jacobacci brothers. Yeah, interesting. Seven hundred to a thousand. Yeah, I'm curious. Not seen one like that before. Solid body electric guitar from Ibanez, professional brand, made in Japan. These are actually really nice. These instruments, one thousand to fifteen hundred. Davoli amplifier. We saw one of these recently. These Italian amps. Yeah, quite nice. I like the styling of them. Classical guitar by Daniel Friedrich, made in Paris, 1963, 14 to 18 thousand. So high end classical there. Carvin amp there from the US. Parlor guitar, 1950s. Nice enough, 600 to 800 euros on that. See, old Gibson amp, the jazz guitar there, another Daniel Friedrich classical there, eight and a half to eleven and a half thousand on that. Not so much as the other one. Another Gibson amp here, Fender uh, electric guitar, six course Spanish guitar by. Jose Benedid made in Cadiz around 1800, three to four thousand. Yeah, interesting. Looks very similar to the work of uh, Pages. So really similar kind of uh, styling there, which kind of makes sense. Both working in Cadiz around the same time. So it's very curious. Solid body electric guitar, Guild brand. Five to seven hundred. 
right selma mcaferry brand this guitar is like what everyone wants to own if you play kind of this django reinhardt kind of type of gypsy jazz uh stuff everyone uh wants these so 10 to fifteen thousand. obviously in a bit of a bad condition if this was in better condition it'd be way more than that so really really interesting how popular those are time a folk guitar there Spanish guitar by Antonio Marin Montero, 1968. Really interesting auction so far. It's like a bit hard to concentrate, to be honest. Brock 10 string guitar by Albert in Troyer, made around 1780, three to 4,000. Yeah, nice looking guitar, but no, nothing compared to the stuff that we saw earlier. Solid body electric guitar, uh, Fender Strat from 1966. Let's see, sunburst finish. Entirely original, including its import case for the Belgian market. Eight to twelve thousand on that. Yeah, really interesting. Very curious. It's got a certificate coming with it as well. Interesting. Another fender here. Gibson L7 there from 1944, two and a cool looking instrument uh, anonymous romantic guitar four to five thousand on that that's a really nice looking guitar actually as well a bit sport for choice on uh, guitars really ooh this is curious lyre guitar by joseph leoka made around 1800 from eastern europe okay three to five hundred that is cool Wow, look at that detail. That is really, that's cool. That's a very interesting. I have no idea how I'm going to do the thumbnail on this. It's going to be a bit difficult. Another one of these Selma jazz guitars, but not the uh, the other model with the kind of more oval sound hole there. 8 to 10 from 1948. Solid body electric double bass. Brand R. James. 3 to 500. Spanish guitar by Sebastian Castro. Needs a bit of a repair there. Romantic guitar by Maline. 1200 to 1500. Miracle 1820. Solid body electric bass guitar by Fender. Romantic guitar by Pons Young Luthier in Paris, six to seven, eighteen twenty on that. Interesting back. Needs a fair amount of uh, work. It would be an understatement, but uh, interesting. Russian seven string guitar there, with original label. Old Paris guitar, anonymous, three to four thousand. This is a real kind of uh, good auction for guitars I think Baroque guitar five courses by Lambert two and a half to three needs a fair bit of work nice headstock on that it's had some fair amount of woodworm all over so yeah traces of worm filled in quite a number of places not filled in the greatest way either Dobro there got the Fender here 40th anniversary Actually, let's have a look at the uh, back of that and see. I expect we will see some more wind instruments soon because we haven't seen all that many. Old Paris round guitar. Interesting. Solid body electric bass guitar. It's this kind of recording model, isn't it? Something like that. Solid body electric bass guitar, signature guitar co. 1000 to 1500. Nice colour. EKO there, ah, oh, Kramer, yeah, one of the ones with the electric, not electric, with the aluminium uh, neck. These are really cool, six to eight hundred. That's cool, that's a fair price as well. Michael favourite brand drums, Paris, second 1950. 1500 to 2000. Okay, a classical guitar by Jacques Favino. Set of Marshall brand 
amp head and its matching cab, two and a half to three thousand. Interesting. Astoria Classic model. Small Hona chromatic accordion there. More accordions here. Nothing super, super crazy that I can see. Oh, we've got loads of accordions. Alfred Arnold, Pia Maria. Let's see romantic accordions here. Andonians, Fratelli Crozio, Crucianelli, all the kind of standard names, but nothing outrageous so far. Fairly standard. I've got some interesting uh, pipes here. Baroque music, Court Musette, anonymous, 18th century, seven to eight thousand on that. These are actually quite popular, quite rare. So I think that will do quite well 16 inch musette by Pierre Chevenet 1960s eh? 8 central bagpipes 3 to 3 to 300 to 350 musette complete 800 to set of Moldavian bagpipe parts Interesting. Large uh, Bourbonnaise bagpipe, contemporary model by the great maker Remy Dubois, 1500 to 1800 on that. Different pieces of 18th century musette. Okay. Contemporary 23 inch Belgian bagpipe. Late 19th century cabaret. Wow, loads of uh, these kind of different pipes. Musette de Centre, 300 to 350. 16 inch Musette, two keys, pouch with reeds, 800 to 1000. Right, we're on to Hurdy Gurdies now by Pouget, 800 to 1000. Fairly standard here. Pimpard there. Let's have a look at this contemporary Hurdy Gurdy by Henri Mengonat. 1,000 to 1,200. 1970s, 80s one there. Another Puget one. Peugeot, hurdy-gurdy, round case, bearing P. Cotty iron mark. It's fairly standard of that time, 18th century. Flat wheel hurdy-gurdy by Joseph Bassot, 800 to 1,000 there. And a couple more here. Let's have a look at this one. Exceptional organized hurdy gurdy contemporary work of enlightened amateur. Okay, interesting. 1500 to 2200. Curious. Another Peugeot there. These zither things here. A few different versions of that. Seems uh, pretty optimistic on the price of these but uh, I guess that is a little bit more maybe a tiny bit more fancier than some of them I'm not a fan of those unfortunately auto harp there cymbal percussions Tibetan bell there N Nepalese trumpet there uh, Dutar new in cover Rare mellophone case as is. Interesting. Accordion by Borel. Dragon Gong. Rare roll monica with two bands. I have absolutely no idea what that is. But looks interesting. Ceremonial frame drum. Right. Azerbaijan tar in its case. We've got a Rabab there, I think, is what uh, I'll probably call it. Yeah, interesting. I always wonder if, uh, I always think that if it's got a metal fingerboard, then it's a sarod, and if it's wooden, then it's a 
Rabab, I think that's how I see it, but uh, I can't remember completely. Little sculpture thing here. Two silver plated piccolo flutes. Piccolo flute and grenadier. Piccolo flute and blackened wood. Or grenadier flutes here. Bohm system. Nice boxwood flute here. Stamped on all corner bodies on all. First half of the 18th century, six to 7,000. That's nice. Nice looking flute there. Grenadier here, silver metal flute. Silver flute, bohm system. Stamp Lewis Lot. And double case containing a grenadier flute, 13 nickel silver keys and ivory headstock. Silver flute there, bohm system. With full trays, open G sharp with 14k gold mouthpiece stamped Bohm and Mendler Munchen, circa 1870. Okay, interesting. Higher end kind of silver flutes there. Another silver flute here, Grenadier flute. Nice. Another boxwood flute there. Stamped A shoots around 1760. Another nice looking instrument there grenadier flutes here grenadier flute with conical bore bone system there lewis lot again ebonite flute grenadier flute more silver flutes here bone system 18th century ebony flute Swear silver key stamped with Villiar except on the head. Five to six on that. More silver plated flutes and ebony flutes. Grenadier flute 13 keys mounted. Stefan Koch in Vienne. Okay. Ivory flutes. Silver key. Stamped on all bodies. Cahusac. Ah, okay. Lancastrian Rose, mid 18th century, yeah. Cahusacs are making stuff in London. Silver flute there, more silver flutes, ruddle and cart here. Double case containing silver plated flute, bone system. A little piccolo as well. Silver plated flute, bohm system, grenadier flute with cylindrical bore, bohm system. Another Mendler, nice looking instrument, silver flute, ruddle and cart. Grenadier flute here, another boxwood flute. The grenadier flute here. Yeah, some really quite exceptional flutes in this auction. Grenadier clarinet, here's my favourite. Clarinets in boxwood, nice stamped Jantet in Lyon. Another B flat clarinet in boxwood. Weber Le Bau. Ebony clarinets here, clarinet in Grenadier or Grenadier. Another boxwood clarinet there, stamped Lot. And onwards, getting closer to the end now. Clarinet in boxwood in C. Interesting. Another boxwood clarinet there we won't look at anymore. I think I've probably had a look at enough. Tinted boxwood oboe there. Grenadier oboe. Grenadier oboe here, boxwood oboe, two brass rings, stamp Sattler, Leipzig, Ebony Tenora, stamp Montserrat, okay, Grenadier oboe, Grenadier oboe, oboe conservatory system, small bassoon, maple branch. Stamped Savary. Okay. Rosewood bassoon there. Buffet crampon. Check bassoon here. Maple bassoon. Stamped on all uh, 
bodies, fleur de lis, Amling, Paris. Interesting. And Grenadier bassoon here, French system Selma, or French bassoons, another maple bassoon there, stamped by August Gabriel Kirst. Maple bassoon, stamped Saltmeister, English bassoon, French Grenadier system, Hawks and Sons. Oh wow, we're on to high level bassoons here. Maple double bassoon with five brass keys descending to sea, stamped with Augustin Rorarius, Vienne. Okay, 25 to 30,000. I have never seen uh, a bassoon at this higher cost at auction before, so this is really quite something interesting. Not that many pictures of it though, surprisingly. Uh, 19th century Swiss bassoon here, Czech bassoon, maple double bassoon there. Heckler, Beebridge. 1958, 20 to 25,000 on that. Interesting. Double bassoon, curious. Um, did do Russian uh, maple bassoon. Oh, wow, one well, the Russian bassoons with the serpent head. Amazing. Three to five, uh, three to three and a half thousand. Stamped Cavillier. Looks like it's had a pretty bad woodworm, this. In poor condition, yeah. Let's see if we go back to that. Well, that's an absolutely awful condition. Yeah, look at that. It's been well and truly eaten. Oh, yeah, but one of these Russian maple bassoons. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Two and a half to three thousand. That's amazing. That is really quite cool. That's epic. Uh, soprano Ceruza phone there. Okay. Two to two and a half there. Quattro Mark. An Alto Ceruza phone in brass. I think these are the first Ceruza phones I've come across to be honest, and now we've got a whole whole load of them. So very interesting. Yeah, baritone Ceruza phones there. Yeah, I've definitely never seen uh, so many. Really interesting. Double Ceruzophone, double bass there. Two and a half to three thousand there. Alto saxophone, Adolphi sax, tenor saxophone, Adolphi sax. We've got to find, there's got to be a Selma one, surely. Two and a half to three, baritone saxophone, soprano. Silver, here's a Selma, a cheaper Selma, Alta saxophone stamp Selma. It's always got to be a few Selmas. Uh, Noble, another Selma here. Yvette Kilworth. Yamaha, another Selma. Two and after three. Let's see, we're on to the final page now. Another Selma here, Yamaha. More Selmas, another Selma here. Always gonna see a few Selmas. Another tenor one here. Uh, mouthpieces, Yamaha, baritone saxophone there. More baritones, Selma ones here. So we're getting high end stuff once again. Okay, and we've got the filler sides here, and another one there. Brass of filler side by Guichard, small bore alto sax horn there. Interesting. Uh, bass sax horn there, double bass sax horn, cornet with Perinet valves, Stozel three piston cornet there, stamped Rao. Okay, flugelhorn there, trumpet, another trumpet, a few other trumpets, nothing too crazy there. Natural horn there with painted bell, these can be quite interesting. Lewis and Munch, Paris, that's losing a lot of its uh, 
paint there, natural horn from Kretschmann in Strasbourg. Okay, double horn in brass, Delphine horn in D, that's quite elegant. Yeah, that's nice, five to six. Seven turned hair's trunk coat of arms with salamander. Okay, that's a pretty crazy looking horn there. Natural horn there in D. Three rotor horn from Sumutra. Compensating French horn, natural horn. Okay, Courtois. Four and a half to five on that. Silver Selma compensating horn, Lorraine horn in brass covered in leather, stamped Rao. Okay, natural horn with painted bell, two to two and a half here. Seen uh, better days, let's just say. Uh, Ida trumpet in brass, rare French horn with four pistons. Stamped Antoine Courtois. Also seen better days, I think. Another Lorraine Horn. I think the last lot here, another natural horn there, stamped Courtois, with the remnants of its painted uh, bell there. Three to three and a half. Well, what to say really, uh, an absolutely mental auction, like so much stuff across the board of interest, I'm kind of a little bit lost for words to be honest, uh, just outrageous really, uh, these guitars at the beginning absolutely mind boggling, some of these pushettes and other stuff, absolutely insane, uh, just a crazy auction that we could spend three hours looking at to be honest, but that would just kill everyone's brain, so we're not going to do that. But yeah, I have to say, wow, an incredible auction, really amazing, definitely worth checking out. So link in the description as always, check it out, see what you think. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.